I think it's clear that uh, all of those goals, whether it's on social issues like poverty, inequality, women's rights, uh, or it is on the hardcore environment and climate issues like biodiversity, uh, resources, or, uh, or trying to cut greenhouse gas emissions, if we do not translate those to an urban setting, we will not reach them. Uh, because most people are already living in cities, many more will come to cities. Uh, cities are systems in and of their own where all these issues interact. Uh, and so, to me it's obvious, the 21st century will be a century of cities, and so it will also be the century where cities will have to deal uh, with these issues. Now I think what is important is not to look at cities as isolated systems. They are connected to each other, as we know, through systems of production and consumption, through transport and mobility networks, through information networks, all of that. But they are also connected to what we then call the non-city, eh? the urban environment, nature, uh, and it's those interactions, I think, that will play a big role. Eh? For example, in climate adaptation, if we do not uh, use areas outside of the city to buffer water, to slow down water, we will have more floods in the cities. So those who think that cities can solve it in an isolated fashion are equally wrong as those who think that, well, cities are a sort of third order level of governance. Uh, I think it, 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 that integrated view will be the key to, uh, to solving these issues. The Sustainable Development Goals for me are a major step forward from the Millennium Development Goals in that they make a much more integrated, uh, it, it's a more integrated approach to linking the socio-economic dimension, uh, where of course poverty still is a major issue on this planet, uh, to the, the sort of boundary conditions in terms of ecosystems, in terms of climate and, and natural resources that we are facing in the 21st century. And that already signals the integration. Yeah? And then of course we have the major global deals on climate, yeah, Paris and how we will implement that. But I would also like to emphasize the one on biodiversity. Yeah? I sometimes wish we would pay as much attention to biodiversity as we are now paying attention to climate because the two are connected. Eh? Think of the land use, land use changes and forestry issue, uh, the carbon capture in natural ways, the dealing with adaptation, but we tend to forget the biodiversity dimension a bit and one should not forget uh, natural capital ecosystems uh, are still degrading and depleting uh, every single day on this planet. So I see a, a strong connection there and I think it's encouraging that more and more countries and regional organizations like the European Union are, are seeing those connections and are framing what I would call macro policies that point at those connections. I think uh, we see that uh, increasing numbers of cities, and not only the big ones, are looking at these frameworks and are translating that, first of all, in local visions. Yeah? For example, Copenhagen, where I live and work now, uh, that we want to be the first carbon neutral capital by 2025, visions. Yeah? They are translating those visions into sort of integrated local uh, policies that are engaging with citizens, that, that are stimulating local population, that often also, I think, tap into local pride, local culture, which I think is a very good anchoring point. Identity, can we use that strong urban identity in a sort of transition towards strong sustainable urban identity? And they are uh, stating levels of ambition that often far supersede those of national states. If you look at uh, compact covenant of mayors, uh, these cities are stating uh, levels of uh, CO2 reductions that most governments are not stating. So it's sort of the, the vision, the embedding in a, in a local 
context that is strongly needed and then making sure that the ambition level is there to put the city on the map and, and to contribute to these goals. And another encouraging thing is I think the networking that is taking place, which organizations like ICLE, of course, have played a, a big role in that for a long time. There are many other networks that are operational. Uh, one could sometimes say that, you know, do we need yet another network when you see new ones emerge? Uh, but anyway, it's a positive thing that uh, the, the avenues for exchange of uh, practices, exchange of visions, for encouragement also, how, and, and, and for uh, knowledge exchanges, that they are wide open. So that is definitely a good, a good thing. The ultimate uh, responsibility over many of the policies that are implemented in cities goes via national governments and they are embedded in international agreements, governments adopt them and then they have to be translated in the national context with often, which often includes high responsibility of cities. So I think a, a more sophisticated uh, system of governance that uh, has a much closer debate between cities and national uh, governments will be necessary and I think this is often the case when it comes to countries that have one or two central cities where all the, the sort of institutions are there and uh, politicians often come from urban uh, govern, uh, governments, they've been the mayor and then they move on but most people are actually living not in mega cities they're living in all sorts of cities, mid-sized cities, and we will also need to think much more sophisticated about how we connect those to these broader sustainability agendas.